Hey, it's Candy from Bless Life here. I um, haven't made a video in a hot minute, but I'm going to address the anti-MLM issues from the opposite side because some of the things that they're saying and some of the things that they're doing just don't click well with me. And I have to say, I am a person that believes that you can succeed at whatever you want to succeed in if you put your mind to it. So part of it is a mentality versus their mentality, which is, I'm a victim, somebody took my money. Okay, enough said, I'm gonna start it. If you like the video, please subscribe. If you don't like the video, that's okay too. But maybe you have got other videos that you'll like and um, hit the notification button if you wanna see more because I might be doing some more of these um, cause I have been really, I don't know. I got drawn, I got sucked into it because I myself left Beachbody and I was wondering if anybody else had an experience like mine. And I left Beachbody not because I'm an anti MLM, not because I think they stole my money, not because, um, I think it's impossible to get to the top. Um, I had my own other reasons for leaving and I may start back up. And I'm a customer. I'm still a customer. I still believe in the Beachbody products. I still believe that it's a good company, a good concept. I still like the workouts. Um, so that has not changed. Uh, so anyways, let's get into it because I want to start with the number one thing that they always start with. And oh, wait, let me, I want you to think about this. Anti-MLM is like a number one hashtag. It's almost a guarantee if you put it as your hashtag, you're going to get some kind of response, some kind of view viewership. And of course, in YouTube, we need viewership, we need people watching, we need people um, engaging. And so it's a number one thing. And I do think that there are probably a lot of people that have bad stories, bad experiences, and I'm not pro every single company that has an MLM structure because I don't know what they all do. I'm not an expert on every single company. I'll give you an example. I did Avon way back in the 90s when I was in my early 20s, and I didn't do too well at it um, because basically I... At the time, I was not a salesy person. I didn't understand sales. I didn't understand a lot of things, and I just, I didn't do well at it. And then I tried again in the mid-90s, I think it was. I tried Pembroke Chef, and I'm going to tell you right now, Pembroke Chef parties were the bomb. People can say what they want, but you had great food. It was fun. It was fun games, and the products were excellent in my experience. So... Um, but I didn't do well there either because I still, you know, I, I, I didn't have the guts to say to my girlfriend, please have a party for me. You know, I just expected her to say, oh, you're selling Pepper Chef. Oh, oh, let me have a party for you. Let me have a party for you. And it doesn't really work like that. So, um, and I don't even know if that's still in business, but anyways, that was my second experience. So my third experience was with Beachbody. Like I said, I don't have any qualms, any problems with any of the products. I like the products. I even like Shakeology. So there you go. <laughs> the one person that's <laughs> willing to go on record on YouTube and say, I like Shakeology. Um, but then I understand what Shakeology is. I think a lot of the people who have gripes against Shakeology and the taste of Shakeology and everything, they don't understand what it is. They think it's supposed to be this super creamy, shaky, proteiny, yummy in the tummy kind of thing. Um, and I think they think it's a protein shake. It's not a protein shake per se. It's a, um, I'm digressing, but it's a meal replacement shake or a supplemental shake for your veggies and everything like that. So anyways, now that I've gotten, I want to address that the anti-MLM hashtag is really super hot. So a lot of people are using it. I saw one anti-MLM or talks about makeup she likes or talks about a makeup or talks about, you know, anti-MLM or this, anti-MLM that. So 
one thing is people are it's it's kind of a clickbait kind of thing for people they are using it to get you to click to get into the logarithm thing so that they can get their video seen so you have to realize that's one of the things that is behind some people who know what's going on and know that know how to watch the hashtags and is are using it so basically they're doing it for um, they really don't even care about their experience or what happened or everything. They're just doing it to get themselves in that logarithm, get their subscribership up, their watch up. And I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of trying it for that reason too. I'm not going to lie about it. Second reason, okay, there are a lot of people that are easily manipulated and probably they are not people that should get into MLMs because they'll be easy to... Um, just not think of it as a business and have a business mind towards it and they will maybe get sucked into buying products that they don't believe in, don't want, can't sell, whatever, because every every MLM has a different structure and I, from what I gather there are some that make you buy product to sell and you have to buy so much product, but the thing I, it still blows my mind because it's like if you're not selling it, you're not able to sell it, stop buying it. But okay, that's that's just another that's just another topic. But those people, they already know that people there are people that are easily sway, persuaded, and so they get on there and they they tell you, oh, they're battling for you and they're they're doing this and it's a movement and they're going to help you and blah 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 blah. Please help. Please help me on my station by um, clicking my pay, my patron button. Please, you know, buy my anti MLM merchandise. Why would you buy anti MLM merchandise? Why? Why would you buy something that you were against? Is for example, I didn't vote for Obama, but I'm not going to put an anti Obama sticker on my car. You know, I'm going to put a pro sticker of somebody that I support and believe it. Why would you buy anything? that is just a statement of something you don't believe in you buy things that you believe in like i believe in jesus i'll put a you know <laughs> jesus saves bumper sticker on my car any day of the week i believe that shih tzus are the best dogs in the whole wide world i'll put a shih tzu sticker bumper sticker on my car any day of the week but i'm not going to run around and buy you know and um why marammers or some other dog that i wouldn't want you know because they're just not my my personal best idea of a dog <laughs> and because I picked Weimaraners because one peed on me one time so I've never really liked them since then but um <laughs> it you know that's what I'm saying I'm not going to pick you know an anti something else it, it just doesn't make sense so why buy merchandise that says that or why you know, you've already been taken advantage of. You've already um, spent a ton of money. So why now are you pouring your money into somebody who's just going to take your money just to tell you things to make you feel good? Which is one of the things that anti-MLMers claim that the coaches or distributors or beauty consultants or whatever you want to call them of the MLMs do. They tell you things to make you feel good about yourself and that's why you give them money. But now don't give them their get don't give them your money. Give it to me and I will tell you things that will make you feel good about yourself. Okay? So that is um something that I see all the time going on. It's a manipulation and you know it's just one of those things that <sighs> makes me want to go crazy but I want to talk about the number one thing that they say is and they go on and on and on about is that you can't make money only the top 2% make money blah 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 and everything and it's not just the top 2% that make money it, there is like a middle income bracket there and when we're talking about the top 2%, we're talking about the people that are making high six, seven figures. When we talk about the next bracket, and it is very small. That bracket is very small too. I will agree it's probably another 3 
they make, you know, six figures, high five figures. And then it goes down and down and down and down from there to zero because there are a lot of people that make zero. And I do recognize that. There are a lot of people that don't make money. But you have to realize, for one thing, that not everything is for everybody. Not everybody has the same skill set. So, and not everybody has the same circumstances. And it's not just getting in at a certain point in time. It, which, that is the same, same anyways. If you go into, if you could go back with magic crystal ball and you wanted to do a bakery and find out what the hot thing was, you know, for, if you went back 15 years, 18 years, you know, cupcakes started being a hot thing to sell and do cupcakes with different flavors and stuff. And you came up with sprinkles, which came out of California and there's other um, cupcake companies that, you know, those people just boomed their business. One, they made an excellent product, but two, it was at the right time and all they made, they were a bakery, but all they made was cupcakes. They didn't make wedding cakes. They didn't make cookies. They didn't make all the other things. They are breads or whatever. They just made cupcakes and they were very good at it. Now, if you could go back in time and do that, you would probably, you could boom. If you had, especially if you had a product better than the people that, you know, made the millions on it. But if you start now with cupcakes, you might have to work still to get your name. But even they had to work to get their name. And even the top people in any corporation, anywhere, any MLM, um, most of them did not make the money that they're making their first year out. So you do have to realize that, that there's always, always, always a time and you have to decide, am I going to commit the time to this business that I want to be in or am I, you know, or do I, if, cause if you have unrealistic, unrealistic experience, unrealistic ideals about what you're going to make within say the first six months and you expect to start making $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $10,000 a month within your first two, three months, you probably are going down a rude awakening. So, um, and that's what I wanted to start with is that, for example, 60% of businesses can fail within the first year. And that's any business. That's if you go out and you start a restaurant, you start, I, in fact, I think that was restaurants. Now that I think about 60% of restaurants fail within the first year. 60%. So that only means that there's only 40% of people who um, make enough money to hang on. It doesn't mean that they're making a profit. It doesn't mean that they don't have to reinvest that money that they make back into the, a, a large amount. It doesn't even make mean that, you know, they might have their restaurant and um, wife is running the restaurant and hubby is still doing his day job, doing whatever, and that is still their main income. Um, it, within five years, and it goes like 60%. Um, fail within the first year, 70% fail within the second year of the 40%. So it's an even smaller number, even smaller number. It goes down until 80% fail at the fifth year. So, um, and there's lots of reasons. There's market, there's um, the people, their skill sets, what they have, what they're selling and everything. So with some MLMs, one of the good things is that you might have tried and true products. And I'm not going to to defend every single product by every single MLM. Um, I know Beachbody products are excellent. Like I said, I'm still a customer. I still like them. I still use them. Um, and I think that they're a really good product. Uh, I would buy Pampered Chef if it still exists and somebody invited me to a Pampered Chef party. I would definitely go get the recipes and I don't have a piece of stone anymore so I'd buy another piece of stone if they're still selling those. So, um, it's the same thing. So you have to look at the realistics and you have to be realistic if you are going to get into an MLM. And if you're going to get into an MLM, you have to not be greedy. You have to be in it, number one, because you believe in the products and what you're selling. If you, if somebody just tells you, oh, you can make, um, $1,000 a month selling this hair care products. 
and you're like, oh, okay, I'll just, okay, tell me, I'll sign up, and you buy the $200, $250 startup kit and everything, and you think that you're going to get on and you're going to sell these hair products, and you've never even tried them, and you don't know if they're good, you don't know if you like them, you haven't um, seen the long-term effects, and then all of a sudden you're making claims, not from personal, like maybe you don't have alopecia, but you're claiming that this thing cures alopecia. Yeah, you're going to be in a lot of problems. You're going to have a lot of trouble. You're not going to make any money because you're not credible. You don't have alopecia. So how can you say it cures alopecia? You have Because part of the success of any of these companies is people who are speaking, believe in the products. You have to believe in the products and you have to speak from your own heart, okay? Those are the people that truly succeed. Now, are there some people that are at the top that mm, maybe didn't have, have any experience and still got there? Probably. Are there people who don't use the products and are successful because they um, are good in management, people management, good at recruiting, good at... Um, talking to people, training other people, probably. But for the most part, to be successful in something, and this is in any endeavor. For example, I was an excellent Lancome counter manager. I was. Because I freaking love Lancome. I think it is one of the greatest makeups around. I think that they have some excellent products. I was excited about them. When they came out with new colors and stuff, I was like, woo, you know, I was ready to go. I loved it. I couldn't, you know, and it showed. And I sold it very easily because I loved it. Now, if you would have taken me from that counter and put me in the Clarence counter, which I have nothing against Clarence as far as their, um, their products I believe that they're very high quality products, but they have a lot of botanicals in them and I can't, I absolutely positively cannot use them. I couldn't be on a clearance counter because I couldn't use their products. I couldn't talk to people and tell people what products were worked and what products were good and what products weren't good because um, I couldn't use them because if I did, my face would be a big, huge red welt, okay? So if you don't, for example, and I'll go into Beachbody, if you don't like Shakeology, if you don't like the workouts and believe in the workouts, if you don't like the other products that they have to offer, don't be a Beachbody coach because that's what it's all about. It's about people that believe any MLM that is good, that has good products. And like I said, there might be some, my... I, I, I have a relative and she sells a shampoo company and I tried her shampoo and you know I wouldn't put it on my dog okay I did not like that shampoo at all not a fan of the company I'm not gonna be a representative for that company I'm not gonna go oh this shampoo is so great and it did this and that for me because it didn't okay so part of it is a lot of people, if you are just getting into it because you've got dollar signs in your eyeballs because you're watching um, coaches that are in the top and they're saying, I just built my new house. I just got a house at Disney. I just went on vacation. I just um, bought a brand new car, whatever it is. And you're like, dollar signs are in your eyeballs. I can do this too. I can sell this stuff. Whoops. I really don't like it. Don't try and sell it and stop right then and there, okay? Because you will not succeed if you don't like it. And that is anything. That is, I mean, that is like the number one rule of success in business. If you don't like it, don't do it. If you want to have your own business, you have to have something that you believe in. Now, can you be a successful, um, I don't know, can you be successful? Like the guy from Zatara, Sailing Zatara, he just did a video and he said he hated his job. It was something in oil and stuff, but it was hard labor, but he did it and he made good money at it. And now he's doing what he um, really, really wants, but it wasn't a sailing job either. And probably if he actually really loved that job and was like, oh, this is fun and stuff, he might have 
ended up even making more money. Who knows? But basically, the rule of thumb is if you do, if it's something you don't believe in, don't sell it. For example, I'm I would never open a store for vaping. I don't believe in it. Don't like it. I think I've read a lot of things that there's a lot of bad things in vaping. It's you know to me it's smoking. You know why would I open a vaping store? So why would you open or become part of Monet if you don't like in their their shampoos? Why would you be a part of? I can't think of it, any of the, I think there's a farsely or something like that. Why would you be part of that if you don't like their makeup? Um, there's another nail one. I have no idea what it is, but why, if you don't like to do your nails, if you don't like um, the smell of nail polish and nail, uh, nail polish remover and you don't think that's fun, why do it? Why would you pick that to be a part of? Okay, so you've got to get the dollar signs out of your eyes and you've got to pursue your passion. And it has to be something that you're passionate about. You have to look at whatever you choose to do in life as something that you can do because you're passionate. And um, so, uh, but I wanted to go on and talk about the anti-MLMs. And I've kind of gone off on a rant, but I think that that is a large part of the problem with the anti-MLM community is people got in it with dollar signs in their eyeballs and not because of the products and not because they believed in the products or they wanted the products or they cared about the products. And that's why you get the other complaint. I spent so much money on all that stuff and it was a waste of money and I lost money. I didn't lose any money on Beachbody. I have used all my Shakeology. We've used all of my husband likes recovery. I like recovery too, but we're kind of in a shortage situation on it right now. So <laughs> I'm saving it for him. Um, he likes the recharge at night and we like the energizer and we like it and we see results from it and we're going to use it and we, I'm doing 80 day obsession and right now I really like it. I'm only four or five days in though. I'll let you know when I'm so many days out, but everything has a failure and a success rate. And for example, Less than 15%, 15% of people who go into pre-med school graduate as a doctor. 15%. And mommies and daddies are spending a lot of money. They're losing a lot of money when Junior says, I don't want to do it. You know, I faint at the sight of blood. Um, I'm not comfortable cutting a person. Um, I don't want to be around sick people. Whatever it is that they decide is their reason, and I don't know. I didn't look up reasons people stop going to med school. I didn't look that up. But, um, you know, whatever their reasons are, only 15, so 85% of people who invest money in their education, who spend a lot of money, um, become doctors. Wow. Only 15% become doctors, 85% fail and quit. Wow, wow, wow. And yet you don't see any anti-med school um, videos. You don't, that's not a hashtag, anti-med school. Med schools are mean. Med schools need to change. Med schools need to be stopped because I wasn't able to graduate. Why? And that is the way it is in life. Um, 40% of small biz businesses are profitable and only 30% break even after the first year. Only 30% break even after the first year. That doesn't mean they made any money. That means everything that they invested, they break even. Um, so 60% in another place that I looked at, 60% of businesses restaurants it was restaurants fail within the first year and restaurants are horribly expensive to open and um i went to business school my first degree was in business and it gave you a rule of thumb of the amount of money you had to save per kind of business that you wanted to start and basically it said that you had to have enough money saved not only to run the business and keep the business afloat but also to have income so that you could survive and live for between two to three years. And then you can start making a salary. 
So even in many businesses, restaurants, stores, everything like that, people are having to keep themselves afloat some other way. So in, in MLM, in some way or form, you have, it is to some extent your own company. So you can look at that. You have to look at a long term. And I think that that is what a, one of the problems with that you don't make money in your first year. No, sometimes you don't. And it depends on when you start. If you start in January by December, yeah, hopefully you are starting to make some money. But the money that you're making in December might not, and maybe let's say you start making an income in September and it's small, but you're starting to build, you're starting to build, you're starting to build. So by December, you have made a thousand dollars. Yeah, you worked from January till September building up whatever you built up and did to get to that $500 that by the end of September, I mean December. And then in January, though, you're going to go forward and it's going to build and build and build and build and build. And hopefully within X amount of years, you would be successful enough in this business. That in, in an MLM business, I'm not in one, so I can't. But that is how you have to look at it. And yeah, maybe nobody explains that to you. And if you didn't go to business school, you don't understand that you don't make business, you know, you don't just say, okay, I start something, everybody come. And people just rush in and, you know, stuff like that. So you have to look at the long haul. You have to look at everything. And I am going to say another thing in defense of Beachbody. The 90% of people in Beachbody that barely make anything, like from, I think it's, I think as a coach, you can make from zero to $500 a year. And it might be less, don't yell at me if I, it might be $300, I'm not sure. But out of that, the people that carry that coach title, there's probably 50% or more of those people, they're listed in the company as coach, but they are um, people who just wanna buy, they just wanna buy a product and they are hooked on the products, they're hooked on the, um, the system, they want to be a part of the communities, and so they buy, say, Shakeology, and maybe they buy the collagen or the bars or whatever it is that they buy, and they can get, because they're buying a, two, three products a month, it, they pay the $15, but they're saving um, $60, $70, so, you know, they're saving a, a net of $45 a month. And those people are never going to talk to anybody. Well, they might talk to somebody and say, this is great. And once in a blue moon, somebody might um, use them as a referral. And, and they'll, they'll get that little tiny um, credit for it, which would be you know, between $15 to $50, depending on what the person buys. But for the most part, most of those coaches are never going to talk to any. Or if they do talk to somebody, they refer them to their coach because they don't want to be an active coach. They don't want to be responsible for um, motivating people and stuff like that. So they're not going to get sales. They're not going to um, email anybody. They're not going to do Facebook or Instagram posts or any kind of promotions through social media. And they aren't going to make any money. They are there specifically for the discount. Now, I can't speak to other companies. Um, I don't know how their structures are. I don't know if they have that where you're listed as something that is going to show up as a person who could be considered, um, you know, I do know that there are other MLMs that like, they say, well, just sign up as a consultant, sign up as a beauty editor, sign up as whatever their name is of whatever their thing is and you'll get the discount, but you don't have to sell anything. I do know that there are some other companies, and so they would probably have to list those people too because they take your social security number. And if they take your social security number, they're gonna to have to fill out a W-4 at the end of the year for you and report that you made zero income. So a large percentage of, and this is just Beachbody that I know of, a large percentage of the coach people that stay coaches for three years, five years, they're just people who like the products and they are never going to sell. They're 
somebody's grandma who feels like Shakeology gives her enough energy in the morning and, you know, she might get, get some energizer in her or something like that instead, instead of, you know, she switched from her coffee to her energizer or whatever it is and she likes it, that's who those people are. And so some MLMs do have that structure and that thing where it looks like the person is a representative who's selling the stuff, but they really and truly aren't. So that inflates the number of people who um, are making zero, okay? Because, but yeah, there are a lot of people then again who try and sell it and for whatever reason, you know, they can't even sell to the, their grandma. So, um, you know, let alone a perfect stranger. And so they don't make any money. And if you don't make any money, you know, it's, you, you kind of sometimes need to look at yourself. For example, when I worked at Lancome, one, I believed in the product. Okay, that's number one. Again, you have to go, got to believe in the product. But two, I started to do things. I, you know, somebody came in and they said, um, I want mm, poodle skirt, which was my favorite lipstick color at the time. If they want poodle, poodle skirt, and I'd be like, oh, in, in my mind, automatically, they like soft, frosty pinks. Okay, and I'm like, oh, guess what? We just got this new lipstick out, and it's, you know, color is in love and bloom. And look how pretty it is and everything. What do you think of it? Or, you know, new tone pinks are very, very popular right now. What do you think of trying this color? Well, you, you know, and I'd be like, and if I had a sample of it, you bet I gave it to them. But, or I might say, you know what? Have you ever tried any of our face? Um, have you ever tried any of our products, you know, our moisturizers or our cleansers or whatever it was that just hit me and struck me to ask this person? So you have to do certain things in sales. So if you don't want to post on your Facebook, if you don't want to post on your Instagram, if you don't want to um, cold, cold message people, if you don't want to um, go outside your friend circle because you don't want to sell to your friends because that's too creepy and gross, you don't want to step outside that circle and start trying to, how do you think you're going to make any money? You know, it's like, I was the Lancome manager, but you know, there were certain things we had to do and the girls under me, if I said, you know, it was Saturday and it was slow for Saturday, I'd say, okay, you go out for 20 minutes and give out um, these little cards we have and it would offer a free makeup evaluation or a free facial evaluation or a free whatever and you know, we get people and they'd come back in and you know, we'd give them like a little mini facial or we'd give them a little mini makeover or whatever. If she said, I don't want to do that. She wouldn't last very long. Sorry. You know, unless she's somehow every time one person walks up to that counter, she's making $500 sales. When she's asked to do something that will further the business and she don't want to do it, she's not going to last. If... If, for example, she says, I just want somebody that walks up and just buys all the stuff from me, and that's all I want, she's not going to last because that is not the way to increase the business. The way to increase business when you have a business, when you're selling products, is to suggest new products, is to suggest and get to know the customer, which I know people are like, they tell you to find out what the person person likes and to talk about that and that's horrible and mean and you're just manipulating the person no there's nothing wrong in me asking a person what colors do you like do you like pinks purples reds browns greens what color do you want on your face it's the same thing it's a sales thing you need to know who your customers are so um basically i think i've covered everything i wanted to talk about but like I said, be careful and be aware. If you are somebody who feels like you've really been taken advantage of and taken, and I'm not saying that there aren't creepy people. I'm not saying that there aren't people who, who are really good at recruiting, but then they're a little bit cuckoo with their power um, or their influence or whatever you want to call it. And 
don't know how to treat people, don't know how to mentor people, don't know how to, um, and that there are people that will take advantage and try and be your friend to, you know, just to get you to sign up and then they really and truly don't care about you. But that's, I mean, that's life people. There are people that will um, take advantage of you and try and be your friend just so that they can get a car ride to work every day and, you know, be talking about your behind you um, and stabbing you in the back every minute that, you know, they get a chance any other time. I mean, that is life. That's people. Okay. So you have good people and bad people in every situation, in every company, in every area of life. And, you know, I learned it. I think I figured it out. What, how old was I? Because it took me a while because I liked everybody. I was one of these people that I liked everybody. I thought everybody was the best person. Um, thought the best of every single person I met. And then after my parents died, I was 24. So after my parents died, I moved to California. And so I was like 25, 26 years old. And I found out very quickly that there are people that are your true friends. And they're going to stick by you. And they're going to be your friends. And they're going to be good to you and everything. And then there, there's this other group. And they are, you know, fun to go and party with. But, you know, if you're down in the depths, you know you can't, can't, can't take care of them. Don't invest emotions in them. Don't invest um, trust in them. Don't expect anything too much out of them because you will never get it back. And that is life. So just another little gem of wisdom from me that, you know, not everybody in life is going to be your bestie for life. Um... Anyways, you guys have a great day, and I want to have, hope you have big hugs, and yeah, stop by for some more wisdom. Anytime. Bye-bye. And don't give your money to somebody else just because they're telling you what you want to hear.